was this girl, I won't say her name, but uh, I had met her at a, at a, at a store. And uh, we went out on a date, and we were kind of touching and stuff like that. And, and she ran her hand across my palm. And you know, I usually have to shave the palm at least once, maybe twice a month. And I hadn't done that. And she felt the hair, and she was like, hey, you grow hair on your palm. So she made a big thing out of it. And she was telling her friends and everything. And needless to say, that was it for that, that relationship. I got this scar right here on the back of my neck from me and my best friend, Shay. Me and her had a fight. Because that bitch thought she was finna step up to step up in my cousins, which my cousin didn't like to fight. So I said, bitch, you ain't finna fight my cousin. If you fight my cousin, bitch, you got to fight me. And so um, me and that bitch got our scrap on. And all these scars is from me and her got this same scar right here. Both of us got the same scar on our elbows from fighting. About a week after this happened, I'm in the shop and I get called into the office by the secretary. He says, there's a gentleman here who would like to speak to you. I go into the office and there's this three-piece suit guy sitting in there. And he pulls out his wallet and there's big initials, ATF, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. And obviously the officer who took the report had to turn it in to the his authority or his superiors who turned it into the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms. They came out and investigated me and thought I was some type of a terrorist making a bomb. Um, it took me a long time to convince him that I was just a foolish person making a fucking firecracker. I don't like people looking at, I don't want anyone to see it or anything, only like my close girlfriends know about it and stuff. And I never wear shorts, I always wear pants. I don't like to like, I always cover it up. And um, even during the school year, I wore pants like during PE and stuff. I wanna get plastic surgery on it and to make it look better, like skinnier, I think. I'm not like embarrassed of it, I just think it's ugly and I don't like it. All these cops were, were running out there and they're like, hey, here's that guy that, you know, was playing a crash test dummy with the, uh, with the, the German Shepherd, you know, and everybody wanted to come over, and I had my leg was all bandaged up, and they wanted to see the holes in my leg, you know, and I was like, fine, you want to see, you know, what your dogs do, and I showed them the holes in my leg, and they're, they're, they're like, wow, man, that's, you know, those dogs are pretty ferocious, you shouldn't, I bet you're not going to mess with them anymore. I didn't plan on it, that in the first place, you know, but that's, that's what happened. I haven't had to wrestle with a, a train police dog again since then, so I'm, I'm grateful for that. I was on the phone with my dad and I realized I'd never asked my dad what had happened to me. I got my mom's version of the story that the doctors never looked at the hips or anything, but I never asked my dad. And I finally said, what, what happened to me when I was a baby, you know? And it gives me this totally different story than what my mother gave me on the phone about how I was a big baby and I just kept falling all the time and I because of that I just dislocated the hip and in the background my mom said how would you know you were never there and right as she said that I saw this vision and I was crying and screaming and kicking she was trying to change my diaper and she's just shaking me, going, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. And I just re remember just feeling all of this pain in my hip. My mom had abused me by shaking my hips. She left the room and just left me there. I, I do have the feeling that I have an implant somewhere in my body and um, I've got some information on it and it seems to be that these areas, the thumb, and the, uh, the toe, and sometimes in the back of the eye, is the areas where these implants are made. I, I probably will, after doing this production, investigate this further to the point of having uh, an x-ray or having somebody put me under uh, regressive hypnosis and seeing what happened or whatever during that time that I received um, this scar, because I have no memory of it at all. This one right here. It's from me being in the hotel, calling myself freaky basin with this nigga that just got out of jail. And we was in there smoking dope. 
and uh, he had hit the pipe. And I had went to the bathroom, but when I came out of the bathroom, I had my pants, and I was just walking my pants down here, and he just hit the pipe and throwed the motherfucker on the bed. And when I come out the bathroom, I didn't sit. I just jumped down on the bed and jumped right on that motherfucking hot pipe, and that motherfucker was stuck there. We had to pull it off my goddamn ass, and it was, oh, just too thick. I've always worried since then when I've heard about pipe bombs going off here or there being found, because I know somewhere my name is on a list. This guy makes pipe bombs. Um, I've never been confronted by any authorities so far, but I think someday I may be. I don't know. That's my story. My warning is don't ever try and make bombs. Don't make firecrackers. How I lived, the doctors were astounded that I was alive. They were incredulous that I had five fingers left on my hand after they realized the power of this bomb had it, and it blew up in my hand. It left me a nasty scar. The other thing about the scars is it's not, you know, some people say they're like courage, and it is kind of like showing your courage, but for me too, it's like a fine line, which these scars are, they're fine lines, of how easy it is for me to give up my um, power to other people that are godlike instead of just listening to what's inside my soul and it they they're just reminders of how easy it is to get abused My silk is starting to get wet in the back, okay? <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> okay, from the top. 